Just like a sparrow in the rain So from these simple things springs heaviness Just like water from my well typical day in the life of Nomaly Brennan? Well, it actually depends a lot on like what month it is and what I'm doing. Uh, like the past two months, a typical day was like, get up at eight in the morning, drink coffee, and then go upstairs and start recording. Probably not vocals because you know, it's morning and I'm kind of froggy. Um, and then just work on that all day and take a break and work some more. Like I've done stuff in studios and I think it sounds uh, in some ways more polished, but on the other hand, it can also sound like a little bit more sterile, which wasn't something that I imagined. And then the last month I spent uh, mixing the CD. So I do something similar, just like obsess over small details, put a CD in my car or some MP3s, drive into town, listen to them and think, oh no, here's a list of things that I need to fix and then fix all those things and then think it's done until I make the next list. Um, so that's like kind of one facet. Um, and the other one is like if I'm on tour somewhere, then I'm either usually driving somewhere and performing at night or like on my off days, I like to shop at Target, TJ Maxx, whatever major retail chain is nearby. Um, oh yeah, and then the other part too is when I'm not doing that is just the writing part of things which actually is probably the most important because like without that you don't really have a career um <laughs> and so that usually i like to do that in the morning sort of like now because i'm kind of too tired to have like any filters up and then i just kind of like play my guitar like i just the really necessarily even sometimes i'll practice something in particular but i just spend some time with it it's just like a relationship and usually eventually something interesting shows up. Uh, but when I wrote the song The Simple Life, it was really early on. I thought it would be so cool to have a CD that was titled The Simple Life. And it was very kind of minimal production and acoustic and the songs were simple. And uh, well, that's exactly what happened. Yeah, there you go. That's awesome. Just as I planned it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's, for me, I don't know, some people, I think would go crazy not living in a city or something like because they need that constant stimulation uh, but for me like even going to the mall is overwhelming like not necessarily because of anxiety but just because I think as an artist um, the reason so many artists are prone to like whatever you would call mental illness and different things is because you have such a heightened sensitivity it can be like while you're playing a song, you're listening to the other musicians on stage and making small adjustments to hold things together or um, realizing, oh, I shouldn't be that close to the mic. It's a little bit hot tonight or something. And then, you know, looking out at the audience and thinking, oh, but did I dress these people on my left because I'm right-handed, so I should make sure that I give them some attention too. And then that person in the corner seems like they're not really paying attention. Is it because they're not enjoying the show or just because they're distracted by something in their life? Um, so you can see how that kind of like awareness, like when you get off of a stage is there's, you're kind of just pinging the world, like sonar all the time. Just like, what does this person think of me? What do I look like in this light? Or um, that person looked at me kind of strangely. Is it because I'm interesting or because I look terrible? It's just sort of the, the heavier shadow side of being able to create and feel things. Um, so like in my mid twenties, like I all of a sudden had this really bad anxiety. I had no idea what it was. And of course, being an anxious person, I thought, I'm dying. <laughs> and, and it kind of felt like that too. There was so many, I was just exhausted and shaking all the time and couldn't eat. And uh, like, you really feel so sick and uh, so overwhelmed by like all these racing thoughts. So that was kind of the beginning of that little chapter, um, which also, uh, coincided with, we, I mean, we didn't even talk about the whole transgender part of things. Are we even gonna, like... 
Go for it. Open up that can of worms. Mm -hmm. um, so this was a time in my mid twenties when I was thinking about transitioning to female as someone who was born male, and uh, it was just overwhelming to me. But it kind of forced me to face a lot of things that I had uh, avoided because up until that point I was like had become a little bit of a people pleaser just uh, going through college and, and graduate school and being like a really good student with a strong aptitude for music and kind of getting into that cycle of like, okay, what do, what do you want from me? Okay, I can do that, here it is. And then, you know, you get rewarded with good grades or maybe you get a special award from the chairperson. <clears throat> um, and so I guess what, what I didn't really think about was that um, I, I cared a whole lot about what other people thought and it was sort of propping me up and the idea of transitioning was like, you know, at the time I was working at a church and I had all these uh, friends and I was doing yoga and it was just unimaginable to even think about telling someone that I was thinking about doing this or um, and letting people down or actively having people tell me that they were very angry about it in the church or kind of like repulsed or what do you, what do you think you're doing? And um, so that was kind of all happening with the, the anxiety part of things. And um, that got a little better as I got further into transitioning. And, um, but it's still there, I still tend to overreact if I hear a song of mine playing like in the background or something, I'll think like, what does my voice sound like to someone who's never heard or seen me before? Does my voice read as male or female or somewhere in between? Or if I'm in front of an audience of people that I've never played for before, I think like, is there something about my presentation or the way I speak or sing that would clue them into the fact that I'm transgender? And then does that sort of, you know, affect their perception of what's going on, or if it's a certain kind of place, like, am I going to be in danger of being harassed by someone? I think people have asked me before, like, does, does being a transgender woman, like, impact your songwriting or affect it? And I think it definitely does, probably not necessarily in the ways people would think, because I'm not writing album after album about being transgender and, like, this is why it's hard. <laughs> This is where I struggle or something. Uh, it's more that uh, before I transitioned, I felt like I was, uh, I didn't know who I was because I had just kind of created this outside image that was like whatever people wanted me to be. And so you can't really write anything good or be original if you don't know who you are. So I feel like that's an important part of the process of just being willing to be vulnerable and figure out who you are and what you have to say and how you can say it that's not the same as how someone else might say it. I don't necessarily really consider myself to be an, an activist. I think, like, my hope is that people find me, like, through my music on stage or somewhere else and then discover at some point that I'm transgender because uh, I feel like it humanizes me before it puts this label on me. I guess when I look back and think about like wondering what I was gonna do with my life, like I I never had a, I never had a, a sense that it would be anything other than music. Um, it just seems so obvious that it was the, the one thing that came so naturally to me. So yeah, I, I still struggle with it a little bit because I think like, well, I'm in my late 40s now, and I'm still touring, I'm still writing, um, but there's not necessarily like a lot of security in it, and it involves being away from home like five or six months a year, and it's why I think like, should I, should I keep doing this? And, but what I think about is what that person said at that festival last year, like, but when I get on stage, there's a part of me that comes alive that's only there when I'm on stage. And it feels like it's a really important part of me. Um, so, I, I don't know, I guess I just feel like it's 
sort of a cliche, but it's like if, you, if you're given a gift that you have an obligation to the world to give back using that gift and to try and leave the world a little better than you found it in some way, or at least try to. around